Welcome back to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch, the show that fuels your business success. I'm Brandon Gano, your host and guide through the world of harmonious business growth. Today, we're unlocking powerful strategies with industry experts to help your business thrive. If you're a business owner, entrepreneur, or executive, you are in the right place. Join me and our incredible guest today on the journey to clarity, growth, and success. It is time to revolutionize your approach to business. Let's dive in with another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Hey, welcome into another episode of Harmonious at Lunch, your bite-sized business advice. I'm excited for this episode. We got a guest here and we are talking about marketing, but also the single most important thing you can do to love your business. I have no idea how those two things come together and, and make a podcast episode, but we are going to find out. I want to welcome on my guest, Deb Monfet. Deb, welcome to the show. Thank you for being here. Brandon, thank you so much. I'm really um, going to be enjoying this. I appreciate it. Yeah. So I'm. let's unpack that first and foremost, because you specialize in marketing, which is what you do is very creative. We're going to dive in there. But how do you specialize in marketing and also loving your business? Where Where's the, the link between the two? Well, you, you really can't do one without the other. I've, I've seen, I've been around for th- over three decades and uh, in corporate plus in, in my entrepreneurship. And I really dove into on- the entrepreneurial life in the last couple of years since COVID. And I've taken probably, oh, I don't know, 40 different types of courses and challenges. And I've, I've done things myself and I had had so many mentors mentored by the best and i've just seen some some things that made me shift my whole perspective so i call it um marketing from a new vibration but in reality it's your business and i work with coaches consultant and consultants looking to make six figures and beyond to simplify their thinking what they offer and how they communicate it so they can build a business they love while attracting and delighting their best fit clients at a deeper level and I call it your talk, T-O-C, before your talk, T-A-L-K. And this can, it doesn't matter where you are in your business, uh, you can adjust your business to just simplify it. it things are too compl- complicated in this world. They don't have to be. Now you're speaking my language. That's what we <laughs> always say, what we do. We are the lazy business consultants. We want to do the least and get the most out of it. And I think, you know, we make that joke, but it's so true. Like people don't want to do more. In this life, what's the point of just working more, working harder to get the same result? So I love that you take that approach. But I'm curious, you said you work with people who are looking to make six figures. Sounds like personal income, not just revenue in their business, which is fantastic. I want to kind of take a step back, though. What do you find when people come to you? Is that one thing that's holding them back from crossing that barrier for the first time? Well, you know, sometimes they're not even sure. Like you have people that think it's one thing but it could be another. And that's where the single most important thing you can do in your business is to really understand your natural strengths. And I call it your number one genius. And the funny thing is, I'd probably say 80% of the time, it's not what you think. Hmm. I've had people totally like reconfigure their business or they, they, they're, they're, they're thinking and they, they make, um, they just make an impact within like an hour. <laughs> I mean, it's things that when you're in your business, you're so close to it that you're not seeing what other people can see. And so sometimes you need that that little Im- impactful nudge or, th- or understanding what you're really good at, and what you really like to do, because in business, we seem to have to, we, we seem to need to do everything. And that doesn't always, that usually doesn't work never works <laughs> yeah. and it's never fun no, and it you isn't. fall out of love with your business which is what we're talking about here so yeah that that makes a lot of sense i'm tracking with that and i'm curious what the link is between what you just said and the name of your company the name of your company is i matter marketing is there is there a little bit of crossover between finding your your zone of genius and the name of your company oh it's huge yeah and i've been like working through this in the last year especially and things just keep popping up and I just do them as they come out because <laughs> I'm really a creative. And I, it boils down to basically like human core desires of an entrepreneur. 
And everybody tells you, oh, your messaging isn't tight enough. You need to, to, to dive deeper into their pain or desires. And people usually don't do it this deep. But there really are three core entrepreneurial desires that everyone has, whether you're selling to clients that are entrepreneurs or, or yourself. And they are growing, belonging, and mattering. Everybody wants to grow, grow their income, grow their following, grow their clients, um, grow their happiness. They, and people want to feel like they belong with communities, with just whatever they're doing. And they want like excitement. They want experiences. And three is people really want to feel that they matter. And, and when they, they get the education to understand how to use it, they feel that they do have the value because a lot of entrepreneurs feel like they don't have value. And they do. Mm. It's just that they're not using the right tools to bring that out. So those are the three core human desires that your whole business can be based on. That's yeah, that's interesting. And I know you have you have a way to uncover those for people, which I do want to talk about. But we brought up the name of your company and you just shared with me before we started recording <laughs> something about popsicles. and how the name <laughs> so We just have to get sidetracked for a minute. Tell me the story of how you came on this name, which is not how you started your business, but I have to hear this. Okay. Uh, my business before was irresistible content. And I knew that there was something that wasn't right about it. It's much more than content. And it's deeper than that. That to me is a little, um, it, it just, it wasn't a fit. So I kept hearing this word, people say, I matter, I matter, I matter. And I kept thinking, wow, that's interesting. And then I went in, I attended a webinar with Dan Heath. And it all boils down to um, the Popsicle hotline. <laughs> and Dan Heath uh, presented his new book, The Power of Moments, Why Certain Experiences Have Extraordinary Impact. And it all in it, what he was explaining is he, he, he was in LA and there basically there are three top hotels in LA, according to TripAdvisor. One is the Beverly Hills Hotel, the, the Hotel Bel Air, and the Peninsula Peninsula Beverly Hills, but there's a fourth one. Actually, I should back up. Those three, you can get a room for like $700 a night and probably more. Uh, but Trip, TripAdvisor gives a fourth and they call it the Magic Castle Hotel and you can get it for $199. So he went there to test it out. Basically, it's a converted two-story apartment complex from the 50s and it's painted yellow. His, his you know, room with the view was basically a back alley. <laughs> and he's like, why is this, you know, why is this number four? This doesn't make sense when you have all these, you know, luxurious hotels for 700 plus. So we went back into the, um, he went out into the pool area, which was called Olympic size, but it's like really a backyard pool. And there was a hotline phone and it was called the Popsicle, Hello Popsicle Hotline. <laughs> And what you can do is pick, it, you know, it's really hot, of course, in LA in the summer and you're sweating and it's just like, oh my gosh, I just need a break and the pool's warm. So you call the Popsicle hotline and there's a concierge that comes up wearing white gloves and delivers your Popsicle on a silver platter for free. <laughs> so it pays big time for the hotel to do this because people love it. And the kids are like going wild because it's like a really experience for them. So he explains that it, it, the external almost doesn't matter. It's the extraordinary experience that you create. And so I, and he, and somebody said, well, well, you know, why? And he said, because I feel like I matter when I go there and I have that popsicle and it's delivered to me. It's a small gesture, but it's delivered to me on a silver platter. And that's when I said, that's the last time I hear that word. I got off the webinar. I, in fact, I had my whole, I had my, my website created. I had my CRM all set up, all of my emails, everything funnels. And I said, I can't, I have to change the name <laughs> and, you know, re, you know, readapt my company. And I did. So now it's, I'm at her marketing. <laughs> That's that so makes funny. sense. <laughs> I, you know what? I, you said popsicle hotline to me before we started recording and I'm like, Deb's lost her mind. I don't know what <laughs> I don't know what she's going to say here, but I've actually heard that story before and I just connected the dots. That is such a cool inspiration for for your company name, but also to connect back to your mission and and what drives you 
to help people with their marketing because it's very clear that it's about both connecting the individual to their message to their customer. And I, I love how you just wrap that whole thing together with popsicles of all things. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. So <laughs> thank you for getting sidetracked with me because I was I was too curious about that. Um, but now moving moving into how you help your clients, you actually you have a tool, you have an assessment, which I took and just disclaimer, um, I'm going to be on Deb's interview series in a week or so. So we're not going to go over my results here. I'll put the link to that episode in the show notes so you can come watch me on Deb's show and follow Deb, all the beautiful things. But I want to I want to hear you unpack your inspiration behind this assessment, how you created it, and what what kind of clarity it gives your clients to uncover their marketing personality, if you will. Well, you know, in your business, it really all starts with you. It starts with what you really like doing, what you enjoy doing. Because if if, if you're doing something just to get the money, uh, it's gonna you're you're gonna just fizzle out eventually. So that's why it's so important to start with you. So it starts with the quiz. It's a self-discovery quiz, knowing your number one, I call it your marketing genius, because in the end, that's what you're doing. You're marketing your business. Um, and then it goes, it, the importance of that is that it, it, it's funny how it works, but it goes into every facet of your business. I mean, I've had people get, I've had a, a guy who got stuck because he was shifting his his um, avatar, his you know his best fit client, to the financial end, uh, financial people services, and so he couldn't figure out how to shift his process, and he was sitting on it for weeks. So after we went through this exercise, he was so excited because he realized what he what he was and why he was holding back that he he jumped in. I didn't even tell him to do this. He jumped in that night and he came up with a complete outline, like it just frees up your mind. It removes the blocks. It just gives you like that spark of energy. Even if it's just, oh, now I know why I wasn't doing that. Like for instance, if the three characters are basically the ATM, CMS, and we, so it's the action taker and maker, creative mover and shaker, and the wise educator. So if you're, if you're a um, creative mover and shaker, one thing that I found in my research was that consistency does not come natural to you. I'm, I'm a CMS too. I'm a CMS basically. And consistency doesn't come natural to me. I have to work at it. I never, I could never understand why. And it used to really tick me off because I wanted to be, but, but I just would lose the spark. Now I understand why. So if I, if I introduce some creativity into the fact of being consistent, I can be more consistent. Does that make sense? Yeah. You know, that's, it's very interesting. And um, I'll say I resonate with that one. Um, and what's interesting about what you said, though, is people always they want to throw terms around like ADHD and, and these different diagnoses. And I'm, I'm not a doctor, but I would present some of those symptoms, if you will. I'm cool with it, though. That's just my personality. That's who I am. I think a lot of entrepreneurs are. We have the shiny object syndrome. Something I've noticed, though, is like you said, like if I'm creating or, and this is not just me, other people that I, I work with and partner with, same thing. If we are creating and we're coming up with new ideas, even if it's along the same path, it feels new and different. And it's very easy to continue with it versus like the execution of things. I always joke, my wife gets on me. She's like, you are like the 90% person. She's like, you will do something 90% of the way. And then the last 10% like, you just have these this garage full of unfinished projects. I'm like, I know it got boring. I got, I moved on. But yeah. yeah, it's exactly what you were saying. And that's why, but and then, you know, you think like there's something wrong with you, but there isn't. That's just your inborn nature. So you have to try to figure out how to navigate that. And if you really think about it, there are ways. So even like when I do a webinar uh, or I do a, a masterclass and I have to do slides, um, there are people that, you know, wanted me to do it in like an Excel spreadsheet, which I get the hives with Excel, but I do use it. So what I like to do is I do it all visually in Keynote and I can get it done in, you know, 15, 20 minutes where it takes me hours in Excel. It's just because I shifted the way I do things and it's okay. And it came out fine. And you would never know I didn't use that Excel spreadsheet. Yeah, that is probably even awesome. better because I, I, you know, I have my heart into it and I'm more motivated to do it. 
Yeah. And that's what I like about this whole discussion is you're finding what works for you and what will make you the best version of yourself in this context with your marketing and your content and creating things, but in all, all forms of life, same, same exact content, leverage your personality and you'll have a much better experience. So, um, yeah, Deb, thank you for sharing this with us. First of all, I matter yeah. marketing is on the screen below me. It'll be in the show notes. If you're listening to this episode, you can go take that assessment. It took, I, I think it took me less than five minutes. Very, very quick. The report on the back end was phenomenal. I can't wait to dive into that with you on your show uh, in a few weeks. But I'm curious when you, when clients go through this and they understand their personalities and how to leverage their creative genius and their skill sets, what kind of a difference do you see in their, in their market, but not only the creation of their marketing, the conversion and attraction of their ideal client? Well, it, it, it really, number one, it lights them up. And this moves into the whole, it's like I said, it's like a tightrope. So it goes from your strengths, it moves into your process because people buy results, but they, they don't just buy results, they buy your process because they wanna know how to get the results and they, they wanna know that you know what you're doing. So they really want your process. So this moves into the process. So your process picks up those same traits of action, creative experiences, education. And then, so it filters it down. And, and if you hit those three areas, you automatically hit growing, belonging, and mattering. You don't even have to think about it. So you're reaching your customer in a deep level without having to stew over it because there are different ways you can apply action-oriented things experiential and just like the popsicle experiential and you know experiences into things and also education because those are the three things that people need and the three ways you need to teach or you need to communicate your process mm -hmm. so it, it's an easy filter throughout it's easy for people to understand um, and then it goes into your offers so you can streamline those offers and then you can communicate it through your content using those three buckets so it simplifies everything but it communicates at the deepest level for your customer that's so it's so brilliant because it even it sounds like the the result that we're all after is almost like a side effect of just using your process that's brilliantly designed deb a Thank plus you. to you oh and one thing i wanted to add so i call it um the three marketing genres like in the movies mm -hmm. so action creative experiences and education but I added, I put a little magic into it. So I added characters and the characters what are what makes it come to life. So it's the yeah, cheetah, yeah. The spider you and the elephant. add characters and I didn't like them. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, when you're doing, when you're in creative mode, then people say, I've had people text me, I'm, I'm a spider today. Tomorrow I have to be a cheetah. So I'm something they take the character and they kind of make it fun. So instead of having it be a drag, kind of like, oh, I'm going to cheetah today. I'm the fastest animal in the world. Like it, and they, and I had, I did a challenge and they even wore cheetah clothes. So it was like <laughs> fun. <laughs> you know, it's almost like, let's, let's open this business of, you know, drab, <laughs> boring business and just put some fun into it. Yeah. I love that you put fun into it. That's, that's one of our, our things here at what if and it's in our logo there's a play button if you're watching behind me the the play button is, is in our logo for a reason we if you're not having fun in business if you're not having fun in your marketing you're just doing it wrong fall back in love with your business that's what we're talking about here today um deb i love it i love everything you said about this except the spider i hate spiders i'm just terrified <laughs> get over your fears <laughs> <laughs> no or if you, actually funny story so i got an email yesterday from uh, a, a business partner of ours and someone we work with and it said, I found a spider in my room, a tarantula, uh, photos <laughs> included. I didn't open the email. I deleted the email. Like, I don't care what this content is. I'm not even looking at it. So uh, yeah, I, got a, I got a major problem. Maybe you can help me get over that with your assessment and your Okay, your let's do it. <laughs> All right, awesome. Deb, this was a lot of fun. I, I really appreciate you coming here and, and sharing your knowledge and your wisdom on marketing and how we can fall back in love with our business by leveraging who we really are at our core and making things easier. I think that's that's the whole point. Like marketing for me in the past, it used to be a chore and something I had to think about a lot, but then I just leaned in and, and you know, be authentic, be yourself and, and leverage your personality and who you are, what you're good at, things start to fall into place. So I love that you have a path for, for people to do that too. So again, it's on the screen, imattermarketing.com. It'll be in the show notes. Go visit Deb, check out the assessment, go take it for yourself, take the five minutes 
and just see who you are and how to leverage that for your marketing to take it to the next level. So Deb, thank you again for being here. Subscribers, watchers, listeners, wherever you are, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss another second of this ridiculous show where we help you grow your business in bite-sized chunks at lunch. We'll see you on the next episode. Oh, one more thing. Oh. Everybody, every day, every single day, tell yourself, I matter. That's I my could message. not have ended on a better note. Shame on me, Deb, but thank you to you. <laughs> you matter. Thank, thank you. you for matter. <laughs> and thank you for being here. We'll see you on the next episode. Thank you. Bye.